welcome to my summary of my ultimate Land's End to John O'Groats attempt ride that I did recently. I have done a separate film to this, so this is a summary of the first film. Uh, if you want to see that, there should be a card just up there or a link in the description. If you click that, you can watch that first. But in this video, I'm going to run through a little bit more about the places that I went, the routes that I took, uh, a bit more information about the ride itself. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned and I will go through that now. So firstly, why did I want to ride from Land's End to John O'Groats? What compelled me to do that? I will put a link to a Just Giving page in the description, so if you would like to read a little bit more about this, then just click that and it will go into a bit more detail. But in a nutshell, my granddad has Alzheimer's and it's got quite bad now to the point where he's in a care home. So I decided to raise money for Alzheimer's Research UK just to help other people, including my granddad, who suffer from this disease. Hopefully we can find a way to prevent it and even cure it in the future. So if you are interested and you would like to donate, I would be massively, massively grateful. Okay, so day one. I set off from Land's End fairly early. I had camped there the night before. Um, and it was freezing the night before, amazingly, so I'd only brought a bivy bag with me uh, and a sleeping bag, and I was pretty cold. All the fog seemed to have like sort of settled on the night, and I woke up absolutely soaked. But nevertheless, I set off really early. There was nobody at the Land's End sign, which was great, so I had plenty of time to set up the camera and take pictures without people looking at me and uh, wanting me to move on so they could take their pictures. So when I set off, I followed National Cycle Network 3 for the vast majority of the day, um, until I was working my way up through Cornwall. I went through St. Ives, um, which was probably a little bit of a mistake at the time because they were hosting the G7 summit there. So we had the world leaders uh, from all over the world, obviously, um, there. So the security was massive. So I couldn't quite go the, the way I wanted to go. I also couldn't fly my drone because it came up with a big warning when I was about to fly saying there was a restricted air zone so I didn't get a great deal of footage from the sky that day. So I eventually made it to Padstow um, which is a really beautiful part of the world actually and I followed the camel trail and uh, it's quite busy typically a lot of people go and use it because it's flat it's an old railway line like gravel surface so it's really easy and accessible for everybody. Um, but I carried on going for a little bit more until I arrived in sort of Bodmin area and that's where I decided to camp. So day one is done. Cornwall is really really hilly. I have, my legs are absolutely knackered. But it's done now so I've just got to get some rest and prepare for tomorrow. About 90 miles done today. I've got another 90 plus to do tomorrow. I am staying in a and b tomorrow though, I'm camping tonight. I'm really looking forward to staying in a and b just so that I can have a shower and literally just uh, have a good night's sleep. It'll be, it'll be amazing. Weather's been brilliant. It was really quite cold this morning and cloudy, but as the day's gone on, it's just got really, really nice. I've had to slap on the Factor 50 at least twice, so it is a really beautiful day. I couldn't have asked for better weather, so fingers crossed this stays as well. It is only day one, but uh, it's looking pretty promising, so touch wood, nice weather for the rest of the rest of the way. Right, I'm gonna get some sleep. So on day two, I set off from my camping spot again quite early and uh, made my way slowly into Devon where I was finally allowed to fly the drone so I could get a bit more interesting footage. The end goal of the day was to get to Ilfracoon which is on the North Devon coast. It's a little bit out of the way, most people tend to sort of go inland and, and carry on going but I wanted to go that way. I had been to Ilfracoon before many years ago and I thought it'd be nice to revisit. The day was very difficult and so was the day before to be honest that the amount of climbing down there in, in the southwest is a lot and I'm, I'm used to a lot of climbing being from Yorkshire it's quite hilly up here but it was incredibly difficult and I think the fact that it was so hot it was sort of 26 27 degrees and there was very little wind with all the heavy bags you're just hardly moving up these climbs so you just overheat really quickly so I found it more challenging than uh, I thought I would but it was a, a really beautiful ride and when I made it into Ilfracoom I stayed at a really lovely 
a bed and breakfast actually. I didn't really know what to expect because I'd booked all of these months in advance uh, just to try and avoid the, the peak rush that everybody seems to do when they want to go on holiday in the summer holidays in the UK. But it was really beautiful. The The owners of the B&B were so accommodating. They even sponsored me and, and gave me extra food and filled up water bottles and things when I set off. So that was a really nice welcome break. Okay, so day two is done and it was very, very hard. If anything, it was probably harder than yesterday, which was also very hard. The weather made it unbearable, I think, in some, some points. It was 26 degrees plus. Uh, the sun was out all day, so I just didn't get any respite. But other than that, it was absolutely stunning. I followed National Cycle Network Route 3, and then I moved to Route 30, and then I moved to Route 27. And all of those were absolutely beautiful. Traffic free, great scenery. Uh, definitely recommend doing it if you're gonna go that way. I went from Wade Bridge this morning to Ilfracoon tonight, and that's where I'm staying. I'm finally in a and b I don't have to camp. I can actually have a shower, which is amazing. So that's day two done, about 90 miles. I've got a big day coming tomorrow. I've got 110 miles at least. Uh, so that's gonna be a big one. See you in the morning. Day three was a little bit more challenging. So this was one of the longer rides. I think it was about 110, 115 miles. I decided I wanted to go to Bath. And the reason I wanted to do that was that there's a National Cycle Network there, one of the very first ex-railway lines to be converted into um, a bike path from Bath to Bristol. And I thought that would be really nice. I'd never done it before. I'd heard nice things about it, so I thought well, I'll do that. So, done day three. It was surprisingly difficult, 106 miles. And I didn't expect it to be as hard as it was, to be honest, so I'm absolutely knackered. I literally crawled here. Uh, I'm in Bath now. Just absolutely knackered. Getting out of Devon was a challenge. Obviously it's really hilly, but then made it into Somerset, and that was beautiful, but it was a bit more rolly, so that was, uh, more up my street, especially carting such heavy bags, you don't really want to be going up super steep climbs. After that I followed National Cycle Network Route 3 again, and it was absolutely beautiful, again completely flat because it was by the river and the canal, but because it was quite loose surface I found that I was still having to put a lot of power down just to keep going. So my legs are feeling it today, I'm going to go straight to bed and uh, do the same again tomorrow. Moving on to day four, I set off quite late uh, from Bath in the morning just because it had been such a hard day the night before. I woke up pretty tired, the legs were really sore, uh, so I felt I needed a bit of TLC in the morning before I set off. Um, and again, that probably wasn't the most sensible thing to do. I think I should have probably just sucked it up and got on with it earlier because what tends to happen is if you delay a day you know in the morning you waste a few hours that's then a few hours you've got to make up during the day if you're on a schedule anyway which I was so I ended up doing quite another long day quite a late day the day after it was a pretty nice ride to Bristol actually I followed that uh, X railway line I mentioned and when I got to Bristol it was fairly rolling hills um, nothing like the days previous so I, I felt pretty good Again, boiling weather, but other than that, it was uh, quite a nice ride. When I eventually got to the Severn Bridge, there's a cycle path just to the left of it, and there's, again, loads of National Cycle Network uh, signs everywhere, so it is really easy to follow. I wanted to do that rather than go inland and then cut back into Wales, just to see what it was like, and actually it was a pretty decent amount of cycling infrastructure. There was hardly anybody using it for cycling purposes. So I had basically two lanes to myself. Uh, nice views. Uh, there was quite a fair bit of traffic, obviously, because it is a, actually a motorway on the bridge, but you are separated enough that you feel like you're in your own, your own space, which was really good. So after crossing the bridge, I made it to Wales and instantly fell miles away from the start, it, even though I hadn't gone that far, probably a few hundred miles. I felt like I'd made real progress uh, up the country at this point. 
I then made my way to Heon Wai, which was where I was hoping to camp, and I knew it was going to be tricky towards the end, so the first two thirds of the day were fairly rolling, not that hilly. I knew that the Brecon Beacons were going to be hard because I'd ridden them before. But what I found was by backloading the, the difficulty, my legs had sort of got numb to the fact that it, the previous days were hard. So when I got to the climb, my legs were pretty much not used to that level of riding. So when I eventually got up to the mountains, they were really struggling and I, I really had had enough at this point. I just wanted to get over them and find somewhere to sleep, but it felt like I was just in the easiest gear, but my legs just weren't turning, you know, they weren't pushing the pedals. I was maybe going three or four miles an hour at some point, so I just had to get off and walk on occasion, which just saps your motivation when you know you've got another 15, 20 miles to go and you're having to walk at two or three miles an hour. After having a few rests, uh, drank all my water, ate as much as I possibly could, I made it to the top and it truly was rewarding, it was breathtaking. The, the scenery from up there was just something else. There was nobody around, so it just felt like I'd come across this hidden paradise and it, it really was beautiful. I would definitely recommend going that way. Thankfully, once you get to the top, of course, it's downhill for the rest of the way, so I had about five or six miles of descent into Hay on Y, where I finally managed to be able to put up uh, my bivy bag and uh, get some food and, and get some rest. So here we are at the end of day four, and to say it's been difficult is probably an understatement. It's incredibly hilly here in South Wales, and it just took it out of me again. Just climbing up those really steep hills with really heavy bags, it just I can't push the gears sometimes. It's really, really tiring and exhausting so I'm camping tonight as you can probably tell uh, but getting up early riding to Stafford tomorrow where I'm going to be staying in a BB, and b and then I'm on to Sheffield to stay with my parents so I'm looking forward to that you can hear I'm by a fairly main road easy access so I'm going to get a good night's sleep, I've stretched all my legs because they're getting quite sore now. Um, yeah, so see you in the morning. So day five, this was mentally a turning point for me because I knew that it was going to be less hilly. I had to work my way across to Stafford and then I knew the following day I was going to arrive in Sheffield at my parents' house. So I'd mentally prepare myself for this bit as a bit of a, a focus. This is what I've got to do, I've got to get there then I can at least have a day of relaxation. I ended up doing about 95 miles this day and again it was boiling so it wasn't an easy day. I did spend a lot of time doing the railway path and the National Cycle Network on varying uh, levels of road surface. So some bits were really quick and really smooth and other bits were just dragging. You just wanted to uh, get off and, and get there. I booked myself in at the Days Inn in Stafford, which if you look on the map is right next to the M6. My thinking was, well, there's a field right next to it, so I'll just go the back way on the B roads and I'll carry my bike over the field and then just sort of find a way into the, the Days Inn. There is no other way other than going on the motorway, and obviously you can't cycle on the motorway. So when I finally got to this point, I had looked on Google Maps to see that looks like the best route just next to it, so I came across it, I'd seen it on Google Street, I arrived, the gate was locked. Okay, so I had to take all the bags off, throw them over the gate, carry the bike over which way's a turn anyway, reattach all the bags and then walk it across the field. I thought, it's fine, I've done it, I've passed the major obstacle, I'm just going to keep walking. And I could see the days in, I get right to the end of the field and it's covered in bushes, spiky hedges, nettles, and uh, a big fence. So I'm getting a bit stressed at this point because I just want to finish, it's been a really long day. And I thought, right, well if I sort of trample down some of the, the nettles and the brambles, I might be able to sling the bike over the fence. So I start doing that, and of course that's a stupid idea. I ended up with cuts and stings all down my, my leg. And I eventually made a path, so I thought, right, I've just done it now, I'm just going to have to just find some anti 
antihistamine cream or something, that'd be fine. I threw the bike over, and as I did so, I sort of held onto the fence, felt this massive pain go all the way down my arm, and of course it was an electric fence. So not only had I zapped myself <laughs> with the fence, I'd also been stung, I'd also been stabbed by the, the bramble, and uh, I had to stupidly go back over it and do the whole thing again just to go and get the bags because I couldn't throw the bike with the bags on it, it was just too heavy. Anyway, I eventually did it and I then started to panic thinking what if I get there and they ask me where have I come from, like you come up cycles here and you know, how did you get here and that would raise questions but thankfully they just let me in, no questions asked, <laughs> put me in my room and um, I could relax. So day five is done and it's been an absolute scorcher of a day again, 26 degrees. Uh, so it made cycling a little bit tough at times, but on the whole, today was a lot easier than previous days. I only did about 5,000 feet of climbing. 95 miles I think I did as well, so it's not as bad as the other day. Uh, anywhere from 1,000 feet per 10 miles is what I was doing, whereas today was about half that. So relatively easy. Uh, as far as 95 mile days go. So this morning I was in Wales, in Hay on Wye, and I cycled from there through the Shropshire Hills, which is a really beautiful part of the country, so sort of rolling hills as opposed to the brutal steep hills I was getting in Cornwall and Devon. Uh, so that was really nice, uh, and I've arrived in to Stafford, which is where I'm spending the night here in a day's in, which is uh, surprisingly nice actually. I changed my route so that I didn't just go through Birmingham and up to Manchester, which a lot of people who do the Land's End route do. Um, I just didn't really fancy doing that. I don't think it's that scenic to be honest, so that's why I went over to Wales. It was a lot harder, there was a lot more climbing. It was much more beautiful up through Wales and then across this way and then I'm going over to the Peak District tomorrow so that should be really beautiful as well. As I've been doing pretty much every day this week, I've been following some of the National Cycle Network as well as the roads just to sort of break it up a little bit. It's nice to be off the main roads at times and just onto a traffic free, quiet cycle trail. Uh, it's not always smooth going, sometimes it's quite lumpy and the, the road surface isn't that good on the network which can make it a bit demoralising, so even though you feel like you've gone from one stressful moment to a stress-free moment, it turns out to be quite stressful because the bike's rattling all over the place and you can't seem to get your groove. Right, we're on to day six, so again, mentally I was prepared for an easy day. It was only 55 or 60 miles, I'd made this an easy day so that I could arrive at my parents, have plenty of time to get my bike sorted, put my feet up and basically, hopefully, have my mum and dad look after me a bit. I set off and it was a pretty easy day to be honest. I ended up going to the Tissington Trail from Ashbourne. I definitely is one of those uh, paths that I'd recommend, a bit like the Bath Bristol one, really worth checking out. It is a slight uphill gradient from Ashbourne up to Bakewell area, but it didn't feel like much compared to the days before. I made it into Bakewell and then it's sort of one long continuous climb up to where my parents live uh, on the edge of the Peak District in Sheffield. <sighs> so day six is done. Uh, not been too hard actually today. I thought it would be worse than it was because I came from Stafford and I was going over the Peak District. Maybe it was the mentality of me not being that far away from places I knew that made it a little bit easier. So. I only did about 65 miles today, so I'm having a fairly easy day. I've got an absolute killer of a day coming tomorrow. Over to the Yorkshire Dales via the other side of the Peter Street, basically. So it's going to be, it's going to be a tough one. So I'm resting the legs today for tomorrow's big one. Right. So day seven, I did set off fairly early from my mum and dad's. They'd managed to wash all my kit and clean my bike and things, so it, I did feel much more refreshed than I had done previously. And I was hoping for the same again. It was going to be a hard day and I knew it from, from the point I planned it. It was 7,500 feet of climbing in 75 miles, which is a lot. You know, that's like a quarter of Everest. I made it up to the top of the peaks. Quite windy, as you expect. Just stayed at my parents for the night and that was a really welcome relief. Just a mental break, really. Didn't have to worry about anything. A few people came around as well to say hi and 
wish me good luck and that was a real boost so gonna crack on today meeting up with my girlfriend later on a lot of climbing so cracking on because i'd maybe over estimated how difficult it was going to be i was being really conservative with my energy i wasn't pushing it up the climbs I started getting um, like a second wind towards the end as well. So as I was approaching like Huddersfield area, where it is really uh, hilly, obviously, and quite exposed, quite windy, I think I had a bit of a slight tailwind. So I was feeling really good, and I started hammering it. I arrived into Skipton earlier than expected, and had a really nice night, uh, chilling, uh, going to a restaurant, again helping break up the monotony of, uh, of cycling every day. So day seven done now I'm finally halfway and I was a bit apprehensive about today to be honest it was one I'd sort of marked on the calendar as being a really brutal one but actually it was it went okay to be honest um, I had been having a little bit of knee pain over the last one or two days but I realized my cleat was slightly loose so I've tightened that up I lifted the saddle just a little bit as well and for about five minutes it was still there and then it's gone so for the rest of the day i was absolutely fine so i was worried about it but i needn't have been it was absolutely beautiful the sun was shining again uh, a little bit windy on the tops but i've made it now to skipton back to yorkshire one of my favorite places tomorrow is the lake district so i've got another 75 mile day a fair bit of climbing as well there but i'll be camping so i'm going to make the most of the bed and breakfast my girlfriend's coming out to meet me as well. She's just finished work, she's driving over. So I haven't seen her in a week, so that'll be nice. So yeah, I'm gonna relax and take tomorrow when it comes. Oh, blimey. Day eight done. And that was a lot harder than uh, I expected it to be. So it's like a from Skipton this morning, uh, all the way over the Yorkshire Dales and into the Lake District. And the plan was to camp tonight, uh, sort of near Ambleside area. I did a massive climb coming out of uh, Ambleside called The Struggle with uh, all my bags on and everything, which was very tiring. Uh, so when I got to the, the top, I had a nice ascent down to uh, Allswater and I just thought to myself, I'm just so tired. I'll see if there's a BnB and b open and thank God there was. There was one with a room available. So I took the opportunity to have another nice rest. So I have a bit of a lie-in um, as opposed to sorting myself out for camping I can actually put my feet up have a shower I've got a long day tomorrow 120 miles all the way up Scotland in one go from here so it looks fairly lumpy but not hilly as, as much as today so hopefully it will be a fairly straightforward day today uh, tomorrow you can tell I'm knackered so I'm gonna get some rest so thankfully I managed to have a bit of a rest and, and someone was willing to put me up and I definitely needed it because day nine was, my plan was to make it into Scotland. It was going to be a long push, at least 110 miles and it ended up being about 115, 120 on the day. My plan was to make it to Lanark for no particular reason other than I knew of it as a name, as a town I'd never been and I just thought well I'll try somewhere new so I went there. I followed the National Cycle Network uh, Route 74, which I'll mention, I'm sure, in the, the post-ride piece of the camera. But it was it was horrendous. I, it was 30 plus miles of just nothing. And you just really want something, even if it's traffic or a cafe. There was nothing. It was just a road with rubbish surface, nobody around, nothing to see right next to the motorway so I probably wouldn't want to do that again but I think that's quite a common route to take so my advice would be if you are going to do Land's End to John O'Groats try and avoid that uh, Route 74 that runs parallel to the A74M and try and go a different way. So I was supposed to do this piece of camera last night but I did 115 miles yesterday and by the time I got into bed and breakfast for last day I was just absolutely knackered and I fell asleep about 7 o'clock so I forgot to do it. So I'm doing it now. Uh, yesterday was a challenge but not as hard as I think it could have been. It wasn't that hilly, it was fairly rolling hills. It was difficult getting out of the Lake District, that's for sure. But 
once I was out, it was sort of rolling hills. Reminds me a bit of sort of East Yorkshire, really. I was in uh, South Lanarkshire. Eventually made it to Lanark where I was staying, and I stayed with a, a lovely lady, Margaret, who basically really looked after me. She even offered to wash my kit, which was amazing, so I took her up on that. Amazing breakfast, had a lie-in. Um, it's only 55 miles today, so it was today sort of penciled in as my rest day. So, had a bit of a lie-in. Legs feel good. Cruising today, going to north of Glasgow uh, to a little town called Baloch, where I actually did my other bikepacking trip where I finished with my dad. Uh, there's a link to that if you want to click that card, you can watch that. I've got a few bed and breakfasts lined up now until the final stretch. So Inverness is my final bed and breakfast, then I'm doing one long ride up to the top where I'm going to camp for the final two nights, all being well. I cycled on the National Cycle Network Route 74 and it was atrocious to be honest with you. There's absolutely nothing on there. It's about 30 miles of just uh, track that runs next to the motorway and it's just road surface is crap. There was nowhere to fill up your bottles, no sign of life anywhere. I got so bored for about an hour of that I was listening to podcasts and music which I haven't done for this whole trip because the scenery has been good or I've had something to listen to. So that was a real drag but other than that yesterday was quite a, a nice ride. Right I'm gonna crack on, see you in a bit. So day 10 done. After a long day yesterday, I wanted to keep it quite short today, so I've just done about 65 miles. Went into Glasgow and sort of followed the National Cycle Network across the river, which was really nice. Pretty good cycling infrastructure in Glasgow, actually. I didn't expect it to be that good, and it was uh, yeah, quite, quite scenic in the city, at least. So I've worked my way up to Baloch, uh, near Loch Lomond, where I'm going to start the mountainous bit of the, the journey tomorrow. So that's why I wanted to take it easy really, after the long ride yesterday and a lot of climbing to come. had a nice easy day. Uh, I managed to get my wheel sorted, which has kind of been bugging me for the last few days. Uh, it's just been slightly untrue. I just thought to myself, if something goes wrong, my luck is going to be somewhere in the middle of nowhere on the north coast of Scotland, uh, where I can't get any help. I'm going to have to flag somebody down or something. So I got a mechanic to check it, and it was just a case of tightening up the spokes. So they've done that for me, and it's running really true now. So I'm relaxed enough to think about that, because it's playing on my mind a little bit. Even though I had a feeling it would be okay, it's just not something that I wanted to worry about, I wanted to be able to switch off. So I've sorted that now gonna chill and uh, get back out tomorrow. Okay day 11 I'd made it to the banks of Loch Lomond and the plan was to make it to the mountains in Glencoe. This was the bit that I was really looking forward to. The weather was amazing I don't think I've ever had such nice weather in, in that part of Scotland. So I followed the main route, the main road, the A82 I think it is, uh, up to Glencoe which is a very busy road under no normal circumstances. You get a lot of tourists because it is a stunning road. You know, it's very, very scenic. So even if you're in a car or a camper van, it's worth going down the road. But if you are fairly new to cycling or you're not confident on the road, I would avoid it. I would try and go a different way if you can. But if you're fairly confident and experienced and you're willing to take the risk, then, then definitely worth cycling on the road. It wasn't as busy as I know it can be because of the ongoing pandemic but I think under normal circumstances it could probably be twice as busy as that and it it wasn't quiet so just bear that in mind if you go that way. So all in all that was definitely worth it. Some people will go to Edinburgh and go that way. While that can be nice you know you can go through the Cairngorms I definitely think this is the better way to go. Much more picturesque uh, and really really stunning part of the world. So day 11 done. Uh, it's been a pretty good day today to be honest. The weather's been stunning, really really clear. Uh, not typical of Scotland this far north but it was uh, absolutely beautiful today. I cycled from the edge of Loch Lomond over into Glencoe uh, and I'm now staying in Balahulish. It's a really nice little village by a loch so it's lovely. But uh, again, I mentioned the weather, it was just stunning. I could see for miles and miles and miles. It's a final stretch now. Uh, tomorrow it looks like it's going to rain, it looks like the weather's 
turning now, so I've been pretty lucky in the past 11 days, it's not rained at all. Uh, it's now going to rain probably for the, for the remainder of the trip, so there's only a few more days left. 80 miles to Inverness tomorrow, following National Cycle Network Route 78. Again, I did it with my dad last year, I'm doing it the other way. Uh, so, fingers crossed I don't get absolutely drenched. I have got a jacket, obviously, but uh, been a bit complacent. It's been such nice weather. So, final push to Inverness tomorrow, and then it's one big ride right up to the north coast uh, where I will be camping. So, fingers crossed again. We don't have torrential rain while I'm camping. Okay, we're getting there now. So, I made it to day 12, and I was really looking forward to this day as well because I was going to be following most of the day National Cycle Network Route 78, which is notorious for being a really stunning. Uh, cycle route that's traffic free for the most part and it really is the only problem I had was the weather Welcome to another beautiful Scottish summer's day The route itself didn't disappoint though absolutely stunning did about 80 miles to Inverness and again I've done this previously with my dad but the other way around so it was uh, really nice to recognise certain stretches and I think that helps with the mentality. When I made it into Inverness I was staying at another B&B and this one in particular I thought was brilliant. It was I think it was like 40 quid for the night and the chap who, who runs it is a keen cyclist so he had a garage for me to put my bike. He offered me a really lovely breakfast and couldn't do enough for me so I really enjoyed that. I did know, however, the final two days. So the next couple of days were working my way up to the north coast. Um, I knew the weather was going to be bad. So I was starting to get a bit apprehensive. Today was a nice day, actually, uh, other than the weather. I mean, it rained for the first time today. But uh, it wasn't as bad, actually, as I thought it was going to be. So I can't complain for uh, 12 days of cycling, only one light bit of rain so far. The only thing that I've forgotten about is there's quite a gravelly uh, woodland bit that is um, pretty intense actually. I was surprised that uh, I made it this far and not had a puncture but I was incredibly surprised at the end of that to find that I hadn't had a puncture so touch wood I won't have any. Uh, I've only got a couple of days left now so I've got one big stretch tomorrow from Inverness where I am now up pretty much the, the middle of Scotland, uh, avoiding the A9, up to a place called Betty Hill, I think. Uh, and that's where I'm staying uh, for the final night. I had planned on camping for the final two nights, but it's apparently going to be torrential rain tomorrow. So I just thought, could I really uh, be bothered camping after over a hundred odd miles in the wet? You know, why why bother when I could pay a small amount and go for a B and B? So that's what I'm doing. Uh, so 105 miles, I think it is, up the direct middle uh, to Betty Hill, where I'm going to uh, relax, hopefully. And then it's just a short push to John O'Groats. So uh, I've made it this far, and uh, going to keep going. As I set off on day 13, the weather was horrendous. I was following just for a couple of miles of the A9. Now there is a cycle path to the to the left or the right of the A9, depending which way you go. But it's pretty much just a footpath that runs alongside a busy main road. And because it was so wet, I was just getting soaked. Just lorries were spraying me. It was a headwind now. So I'd had a really nice tailwind for at least 12 days and it seemed to just completely switch. I was getting battered with rain. And for the first 10 miles, I was just so fed up. I knew it was going to drag. It was going to be a 100 mile day plus on day 13. Uh, and I just knew that I was going to be miserable. It was going to be one of those days on the bike. The weather did clear a bit. So I had a maybe 20, 30 miles where it wasn't too bad. But I was already wet, you know, and you won't dry out unless it gets really warm. And being in North Scotland, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I carried on going um, further north. I'd never been this far north before, uh, anywhere actually in the world, so I was um, a bit nervous. I wasn't quite sure what to expect here. I had a vision of northern Scotland, like beyond Inverness, being so 
uh, sparsely populated, there wouldn't be shops for miles and miles, I wouldn't be able to fill up with water, I wouldn't be able to replenish food, so I had gone out and done a big shop the day before and stocked up on food. But it really wasn't like that at all. If you follow the A roads, which even though they're A roads aren't that busy, um, I went directly up the middle and there are shops and you know post offices and pubs and everything so it really wasn't that bad at all. The weather did turn again from when I got to sort of Bona Bridge area. I think it's called Bonner Bridge but I prefer calling it Bona Bridge for comedy value. When I got there um, the weather turned again and it just became really miserable. The, the temperature dropped, it must have been about 8 or 9 degrees in midsummer. I had all my layers on but I was just going dead north and I had a, a headwind the whole way and the rain was just pelting me in the face. I managed to eventually get to the north coast. I could have stopped a few times but I just had to turn on the switch and just say just keep going, don't stop because if you do you're going to get even colder and then you're not going to set off again so just keep going. I eventually made it to the north coast and I was freezing, I was literally shivering, I was trying to find somewhere to get something to eat. All the shops seemed to have closed at this point, it was quite late, but I was about five to ten miles away from my hotel which I hadn't planned on using actually. I was going to camp the last two nights but the weather was so bad, I'm so glad I did. I would have been miserable, It was everywhere was soaked. Um, so. I just carried on going, eventually, it felt like a lifetime, it probably wasn't that long, but I eventually arrived at the hotel and it was so good. It was in Betty Hill, they had a restaurant, they uh, offered to store my bike and even let me use their bike pump to pump up the tyres and I could actually switch off, I was, I was so knackered. I had a big dessert at the restaurant and I had a hot shower and just went straight to bed and I must have slept for... 12, 13 hours, I was absolutely knackered. I knew that was the final big test because day 14 was only going to be about 50, 60 miles to get to John O'Groats. I did have to do some cycling afterwards. My plan was to cycle to Wick or Thurzo and get the train uh, from there. So I felt okay after that. I felt like I've done the hardest part. All I've got to do now tomorrow is just get to John O'Groats. So day 13 is done and today was brutal. The weather was atrocious, literally from setting off, it didn't stop raining for most of the day. And when I eventually got to uh, the Bona Bridge area, um, it was just a headwind for like 40 miles plus and spray hitting me in the face constantly, so I'm absolutely shattered. 105 miles done today, but I've made it to the north coast, so I'm in touching distance of John O'Groats. So I'm going to have a bit of a chill tonight. I'm so glad I'm not camping. I'm glad I made that decision because uh, it's still chucking it down. So the ground is just going to be sodden. I've got about 50 miles to John O'Groats and then I'm going to cycle from there to Wick where I'll be getting the train back. The north coast of Scotland is absolutely stunning. I would have liked the weather to be nicer but I can't imagine it gets much warmer up there just being so far north. I did follow elements of the North Coast 500 which I would really like to do. I've seen a few people do bikepacking there now and I'm sure I will do it at some point. It's just the way I like to do things, I like to film as well. So I probably would only want to do 50, 60 miles a day so it would take quite a long time to do it. But it's on the, the list. So day 14, I had a bit of a lie in, you know, set off about quarter to nine-ish and set off for John O'Groats and the weather was much better it was still cold and still very very windy but it wasn't as wet and I knew I only had 50 miles to do which by this point 50 miles felt like nothing so I carried on going um, it's quite undulating at the top coast of Scotland until you get really far east where it gets quite flat and I did have a cross headwind again for quite a, a lot of the day I followed the National Cycle Network again and some of it was pretty crap to be honest that the pay it was basically a pavement with massive potholes in it and I just thought this is going to break my bike at the last possible second so I in hindsight would have followed the main roads it's not that busy but it's quicker for me and I, I would have rather have done that on a nice surface than on a awful pothole alley after what felt like several hours I made it to John O'Groats and it was really busy actually 
I got there expecting it to be as quiet as it was at Land's End when I set off, but that's because I set off so early. There were loads of people there. I didn't really have much time to set up the camera. It was so windy the tripod was likely to blow over anyway. I had a couple of people holding it for me, which was really generous. Um, but I'd made it. <sighs> so day 14 is done. I've done it. I can't believe I've done it, to be honest. <laughs> At some points during that, I just thought there's no way I'm going to be able to finish this. Whether it was the the heat at first, or the climbing, and then the wind, and the, the torrential rain at the end. But I'm so glad I've done it. It's been an amazing experience. Um, met so many amazing people on the way as well. People are so generous as well. There's something I, I mean, I, you, you'd, you'd like to think people are generous, but it's really been evident. Every time I've stopped, even just to you know take a shot, some people have gone. Oh, are you doing this for charity? Or are you going to John O'Groats? Or where do you come from? And offered to donate, and it, it's been amazing. So I've, I've raised well over a thousand pounds already. So I'm really chuffed with that. And I'm sure that'll go a long way to helping support Alzheimer's research. So if you would like to donate, there's still time. I'll put a link in the video description. So please feel free to. Um, it makes a massive difference to, to me and everybody who knows somebody who's suffering with Alzheimer's. So just to run through some numbers, I've done well over 1,200 miles. I didn't do the direct route, um, which I'm, I'm kind of glad about, to be honest, because I didn't just stick next to the M6 for the whole way up. Uh, so I managed to see some more of the world. Um, I went in three countries. So I obviously started in England, went into Wales, uh, back into England, and then up into Scotland. So I managed to see the vast majority of Great Britain. I climbed up the equivalent of Mount Everest twice. I've done well over 60,000 feet of climbing. Self-supported as well. I hadn't had anyone helping me on this journey. I've been carrying all of my equipment, including this camera, uh, the drone, the tripod that it sat on, all my, my own food, camping gear, water, etc. So the bike has uh, weighed a ton, but it has been fantastic as well. That bike is brilliant and it you know, it's done a lot already, but the fact that it made it all the way up here, very few issues other than issues that I caused myself, uh, just through lack of maintenance, um, it, it was brilliant. So I'm glad I've done. I, you know, it was amazing, but it was also incredibly challenging. So I'm just happy to be able to say I've done it and done it for a good cause. I'm uh, in Thurso at the moment, just about to get the uh, the train. So. Uh, a long day ahead, still about 13 hours on the train, but I'll be glad when I get home. Thanks very much for watching if you've been sticking with me so far. it's uh, It's been a brilliant journey and I hope you enjoy the video. Cheers. I was so relieved to have made it. I had such a fantastic time. You know, the scenery was amazing. I'd never done something of this level. You know, I cycle all the time, but I'd never done 90, 100, 110 miles a day for that amount of time. So I was really impressed with myself. I'm glad I managed to do it. I think it goes to show that anybody can do it. As long as you've got some experience and you pace yourself, you can do it. It's all about the mental attitude, the planning uh, and the training, but also knowing your ability. I think if you're fairly new, you might want to do 50 miles a day. It will take a fair bit of time, but you'd still be able to do it. But I'm not the fittest cyclist by any means, and I could do 100 miles roughly a day. And I think, if I can do it, you can do it.